Hello and welcome to this Unreal Engine tutorial series. In this video, I'll be explaining specifically what I'd like to teach in this series to outline how these tutorials might differ from others you will find on YouTube. Hopefully this will give you an idea as to whether you'd like to continue on with this particular series. I have been using Unreal Engine 4 for a few years now, and personally I found that sometimes one explanation is not enough to fully grasp a concept. So I will be trying to explain how things work in as many different ways as possible with the hopes that one of those explanations will trigger that aha, I get it moment. As you can see by the title of this video, these tutorials will focus on three types of gameplay. First person shooters, role playing games, and open worlds. The more basic mechanics will be covered first with more complex systems being built on top of those in the future. So if you can't see a specific topic that you're looking for, it may be coming soon. In this particular video, we'll be going over some of the game development concepts which will be used as the foundation for anything done in this series. Next will be what the difference is between different versions of Unreal Engine 4, and then a simple overview of blueprints, actors, and variables. The first three concepts that we will be using are as follows. Firstly, multi-platform. Unreal Engine 4 is currently being used by developers all around the world to design games on all three major systems. As such, all of the features required to run on consoles are not only built in, but constantly updated. As an example of this, Gears 5 has already been running on the Xbox Series X with only two weeks of development. With this in mind, it wouldn't make much sense to limit your game to one platform, but even if you've already decided that your game will be a PC exclusive, gamepad support is always a nice feature to have and will naturally come with this design process. Secondly, designing for scale. If you'd prefer to design a much smaller game rather than the next big open world adventure, then you might think you can get away with cutting some corners. For instance, if you only have a handful of weapons in your game, as opposed to the latest Borderlands or Tom Clancy game, then you might not put a lot of effort into designing and coding those weapons. However, I'm of the firm belief that all games should be designed with the same love and care, regardless of their size, and that will be reflected in these tutorials. We will avoid cutting corners at all costs. Lastly, understanding your work. There's a joke among software developers of not knowing why your code is working, but that it just works. This can lead to some huge problems down the line, especially if your game has been released and you have an audience demanding that you fix a bug caused by said code. It's extremely important to understand what you're doing and why something works. So if something breaks in the future, you can fix it without breaking other systems. I'm sure we can all think of some developers who are infamous for breaking a game further with each patch. This ties back into the point I made earlier, where sometimes one explanation won't be enough to understand a concept, which is why I'll be trying to go over as many explanations as I can. Now we'll briefly cover version types. At the time of recording, the most current version of Unreal Engine is 4.24.3. The first numeral might suggest that an Unreal Engine 5 could drop at any moment, but it's a lot more like Microsoft with Windows 10 or Apple with Logic Pro 10 and Final Cut Pro 10, with regular updates replacing a full version upgrade. This brings us to the update we're currently on. As you can see, update 24 has all the newest features of Unreal Engine, including ray tracing support. While it might be tempting to use the newest version as it releases every time, I would strongly advise against that, as whether or not an update is stable depends entirely on its revision. You can see after the second decimal place is the number 3, indicating that this is the third revision of update 24. A new version of the engine will go through a preview phase available to the public, such as Unreal Engine 4.25 currently in preview and then the official release will start at revision zero. Steer clear of this version because all the features they've just added will also come with a whole bunch of bugs. So my general rule is to not update the engine until its third revision. And even then it's not always necessary. 
you can see that I was using version 4.22.3 before this current one, and I've completely skipped over 4.23. That's because there are no new features which were applicable to my game project, and the risk of a feature that my game depends on being removed or redesigned wasn't worth the stress. Epic Games will release a huge blog post when each update is released, explaining everything that's been added, changed, or removed. These blogs are packed with so much information, but I'd encourage you to at least skim over these blogs before you update your project to the newest engine. There are of course plenty of optimizations added with every update, but you probably won't notice the difference unless you're doing major skips between versions. Now on to the graphical user interface, or GUI for short. This is where you'll be doing most of your work inside your levels. When you open a blank project in Unreal Engine, you'll be greeted with this screen. In the top center, you can see the level itself populated by some furniture. On the left are some items that you can drag and drop directly into the level. We'll be referring to these items as actors later on, but for the most part, the only thing we'll actually be using from this left menu is the geometry tab. Most of the time, however, we'll be using the content browser seen below. Moving our attention to the upper right, you can see an index of all the objects currently in the level. Selecting any of these objects from either the list or within the level will open a details panel on the bottom right, where you can edit the individual properties of whatever you've selected. This will make much more sense once we've jumped into the editor in our next video. But before we do that, we need to discuss exactly how we'll be making our game. It's all well and good to throw things into our level, but how they interact with each other will require some code. Luckily, you don't need to know a language to begin Unreal Engine, because we have blueprints. Blueprints refer to the visual scripting designed by Epic Games. Instead of typing out a line of code, we'll be creating and connecting nodes together, as seen on the right. Under the hood is one of the harder coding languages to learn and master, C++. If you were to accidentally click on any of these nodes too many times, which you most likely will do at some point, Unreal Engine will attempt to open either Visual Studio or Xcode, depending on your operating system. This will show you what the node looks like written in C++, and it might just make you grateful that you don't have to learn that instead. The concepts will be almost exactly the same, however. Everything you learn in Blueprints will have the same logic as lots of other software development, so if you do want to learn C++ or another coding language, then you'll be one step ahead of someone who hasn't used Blueprints before. The next concept to discuss is actors. An actor is anything that exists inside your level or world. Actors can be inanimate objects, such as 3D models, which we'll be referring to as static meshes in Unreal Engine 4. Or they can be a combination of models, code, and various other elements tied together in what we call a blueprint class. A pawn is an extension of an actor with code, but with customized code added to give the actor the ability to move on its own. As an example, a simple actor blueprint would be an ammunition crate, but a pawn would be something controlled by the player. But the most popular type of actor that we'll be using is called a character. Characters have even more functionality built into them with pre-built jumping, crouching, swimming, and flying options right out of the box. This makes it the ideal candidate for when it comes to designing our very own player. You will see all of these options available when it comes time to create a new blueprint class inside the engine, along with a list of other blueprint actors with other customization codes, which we'll learn about at a later time. Lastly, we'll introduce variables into the mix. Variables contain different types of values that can be changed while in game. The type of value depends on the type of variable. For instance, a Boolean variable can be a value of either true or false. Inside of Unreal Engine 4, they are represented by a dark red. You can see that in the image on the right. There are two Boolean values in this character. They are both simple enough is dead is asking if the player is dead and overshield on is asking if the overshield is active both questions would only have a yes or no answer thus true or false floats can be any number with a fractional value
the bright green on the right shows eight float values. If we take health as an example, in the middle of a game, our character could take damage, which would subtract the value of the health variable. When the health variable reaches zero, we would set it up in a way to notify that our is dead boolean should change from false to true. The same thing would work when our character's overshield float variable reaches zero, thus setting the overshield on variable from true to false. Integers are also a numerical value, however they are incapable of having a decimal value and can only consist of whole numbers. As an example, we'd use an integer for counting the ammunition in our weapon, as having 1.5 bullets wouldn't really make any sense. Vectors are coordinate values, consisting of an x value, a y value, and a z value. These would be used not only to determine a player's location, but also save it onto a save file. And text would be used to store something such as the player's name, as seen by the pink color on the right. We've covered a lot of information in this video with the hopes of laying down the foundations for understanding how game development in Unreal Engine 4 works. If any of these concepts didn't make sense, hopefully the big picture will start to come together in the next video, when we hop into the engine and put it all into practice. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and depending on how complex the answer is, I might either respond directly or add the explanation to the next video using visual aids. Hopefully you'll join me there.